today we have got another room makeover. I know we haven't even finished the last one, but I feel like that's just a given with any house renovation. You start a project, you don't finish it, and then you start the new one. It's just how it is. It is an exciting one. It is the dining room turning into my office, which to be honest is a good six months late. We haven't even been here six months. It's a good four or five months late, but it's happening and that is because I have found my dream desk. Now you will know from the antique flea market trip that we did and then the haul that I did and some previous videos I have been going on about of trying to find a desk. Awarding Victorian style, really classic, traditional, just gorgeous desk. And I just couldn't find one for six months. I've been on Facebook Marketplace nearly every single day trying to find one. Lo and behold, I go to a flea market, nearly one of the last stalls that we decide to look at after seven, eight hours of walking around and I find my dream desk. And that means that now I get to decorate my dream office. This is gonna be the beginning of the office transformation. If I show you, this is the entrance. The floor looks like so. We've managed to get a huge three people sofa in here and there's still quite a lot of floor space these are the double doors that lead into the living room i do plan on painting those doors or staining them darker because i think it will clash with the wood from the desk and there's sorts of woods that i want to have in here office things that need to be in an office like a printer and a paper shredder but hopefully those will have a home soon. All of our board games and stuff, they used to live in our old office. Things like my tripods and that, they never have a home. So everything just lives everywhere. I need to get everything out. I need to put things in rooms or garages. <laughs> Changer. The sofa fits and the door, I thought this was would be the problem. The door wouldn't open and shut. There's actually a good, probably three inches this side and three inches that side, which is perfect. That means we can keep the sofa. It feels so good knowing that I'm gonna have this dining room converted into an office really, really soon. Definitely gonna do the painting tomorrow because I'd love to get that done really quickly. Because it's raining at the moment, we're actually meant to be doing the garden in and we started that over the weekend, but yeah, from now until the end of the week is meant to be terrible weather. So decorating inside is much more appealing. It is now time to make dinner. I'm using HelloFresh tonight. So thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this portion of the video. If you don't know, HelloFresh is a subscription-based recipe box service. It gets delivered to your house. You can decide to cancel it at any time. You can pause weeks. You can skip them if you're away for a week, if you're on holiday. If you know you've got guests coming over for a week, family coming to stay, you can even add on the number of people that you would like to get your pre pour ingredients for it's so flexible it really works around you we've been using it now for years but specifically really consistently for the last few months and it has made such a huge difference on eating more healthily more consistently we're not wasting food if you're someone that struggles to come up with ideas for recipes as well you need to try HelloFresh. It's like collecting Pokemon cards. You basically get a bag of ingredients, pre-portions, that you don't have to waste anything. Everything you need is in here to be cooked. And then you get a recipe card and the number on the corner of the recipe card coincides with the bag. All you've got to do is cook everything inside of here. You also get step-by-step -step ingredients on the back along with pictures that you know what you're doing at each step. You get all of your nutritional value information as well. Food is always 10 10. Like we never ever have recipes that we don't like, but they have over a hundred recipes a month for you to choose from anyway so if you are quite fussy you will find something that you like like i don't like cheese rob's allergic to nuts and we don't really eat pork but we always find so many things to choose from each week that we actually find it difficult to like settle on a few things so honestly shout out to the hello fresh chefs because they are doing bits but yeah, I will leave everything linked in the description box for you or on screen. Use my code to get 60% off your first box and 25% off your next two boxes. And if you haven't tried HelloFresh before, please give it a go because I don't think you'll be disappointed. I really, really don't. I feel really good about this, but I'm gonna pull in the desk and see if it's a good fit. Fingers crossed. 
So my initial thought was to have it like this. So I don't think it's going to fit most. Kind of. Wait, is this centered in the doors? I kind of want it more centered in the room. I've got my chair here. Also, actually, I haven't thought about the fact that I won't have any plugs. I won't be able to plug anything in. <laughs> we don't have any electrics in the floor to have like a floor plate plug that I could plug it in discreetly. So I would have to have a cable trailed across the floor. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> but it's just not very practical. If this was the tiniest bit smaller, but actually it overhangs that door. It's just, it's ill-fitting. So maybe the desk should go against that wall. I just really didn't want to sit against a wall, like face a wall doing my work. This is difficult. I don't normally put this much effort into that planning of stuff. I really don't want to admit this, but it kind of feels like this is what's going to have to happen because we've also got a socket down there, which makes sense. That fits quite nicely. It doesn't feel super squished. I'll have a plug down there to plug. I can put shelves above. I can get a couple of frames here and here, which would be nice. Slight dilemma now is if we have the Billy bookcase here, I can't have curtains, which maybe isn't the end of the world. I could potentially do Roman blinds. And it's because we've got these gorgeous doors here that we lose a wall for, for putting stuff up against. Otherwise I would have just shifted this bookcase and put it here. Sofa, so that's great <laughs> i'm gonna sleep on it i'm gonna do some research on pinterest because i've been loving pinterest pull some ideas together come up with a bit more of a plan and then tomorrow ness is coming to help us she's gonna come and help paint which is really exciting she does not know how to paint either bless her but that means we need to go and find a new paint color i love the color of the living room but i want to just try and be a bit more bold each time i do something so i thought the living room color was pretty dark before now that i'm used to it I don't feel like it's dark enough. So I think we're gonna go darker in this room. The neutrals have taken over everything and the boucle had taken over everything. This sofa used to be this color and I actually made, I made pillow covers for it. This is the color we are working with. This is so stunning and sorry, it is now 10 o'clock at night so you cannot actually see but this is a beautiful dark plush navy, stunning. Now when I did cover this, I made sure to make pillowcases for all of the cushions, cushion cases. And I also made sure not to damage the actual base of the sofa. So I used no fabric glue. I didn't use any stitching. I used a lot of webbing. I think I may have used some staples so that they would be easy to pull off. These have lasted a good, I'm gonna say three years. Three years, because I think it was during lockdown. They lasted. Now, if I had used a different material, a better, stronger, more durable material, rather than a 12 pound blanket from the range, it may have looked better, because the cushions looked worse for wear, to be honest, but it has lasted. And the good thing about this sofa is, it is a modular sofa, which means you can pull it apart. I made sure to do it so that I could pull it apart. And let's see here. Now, I'm just having 10 p.m. zoomies right now, which means I've got all the energy, whereas I've been absolutely shattered, nearly napping on the sofa all day, but all of a sudden I feel like I wanna just start painting the room. <laughs> I'm gonna take these out roughly, which will take me five minutes. And then tomorrow I'm gonna to go through with like a staple picker. I'm gonna make sure I've removed every staple. I'll link the video of me making this so you can see around about what I did. Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> We're joined by a very special guest, Miss Vanessa Webb. Here I am, been, been waiting. waiting for me. She's come to help today because we are painting the dining room and we've just sat down and decided we like the colour 
green smoke by Farrow and Ball. This room is going to eventually turn into something else, so this isn't a forever colour. So it's a temporary office for me, so we're going to probably try and get it mixed up by Valspar, a similar colour, or see if they've got something similar, or see if Dulux have something, just to keep the prices down a little bit. And we're going to paint the room, which is exciting, so let's go to B&Q and see what we can find. We've gone with these shades of green we've got shady lane norway spruce greenish gray and weather the storm putting it in these valspar like lighting things and they help to show you what it's like in cool neutral and warm light and then this is the color of the sofa that's why i've got that there to see if it works together this is what it'll be like at night time under warmer lights or in like direct sunlight which again is really nice oh, that looks lovely oh, that's nice, yeah. So will I need to use a primer with this one, can I? So you'll need a primer for the wood one. Okay. Definitely. We're back, we've got paint. Two wall paints. Now I decided to do a little test here. The paint that I bought in the living room was the premium Valspar paint. I've just bought the classic for this room. I want to see if there's a difference in the quality of it when you're putting it on the walls and if it wears over time. So it was three for two in B&Q. I decided to think forward and get some paint for the bedroom as well so the brown one that you will have seen in the previous clip was finch feather and i think we're going to do the bedroom in this color because i really want the bedroom to be warm cozy vibes then i also picked up the paint for this room which is weather the storm it looks really quite green in the tin but normally paints dry a little bit darker so we'll see what it looks like when it's actually dry dry but we're going to do it anyway no matter what it looks like the valspar premium interior wood and metal paint so you can paint this on top of your skirting architraves doors and radiators pipes if you want to i'm not going to be painting radiators in here i don't think so basically in a couple of videos ago i asked your opinions if i should paint the radiators a lot of you said yes it would make them flush into the wall they would look so much more seamless it opens the room up a little bit more instead of breaking it up a lot of you said no you don't always get a good quality paint for the radiator and scientifically it reduces the amount of warmth that then can escape because of like the colors the darker you go the less heat it lets out because dark colors absorb heat something along those lines and then some of you said just build a radiator cover and then you've got somewhere to put stuff as well which you know I've done a radiator cover before I will leave that linked here for you to watch it was actually relatively simple and I've learned from my mistakes so I would probably do it a bit better this time and I could make it look exactly how I wanted to I did buy this because I want to paint the skirting the architraves and potentially the doors so we shall see how we get on with that picked up a paint can opener now I do have small metal versions of these but the Valspar plastic tubs with the thicker lid as opposed to the metal thin lids they're really difficult to, uh, to open when air gets like trapped in them and they like suction themselves close to obviously keep the paint you know good quality fantastic for that but really hard to open up especially if you've got nails or like weak upper body so I picked up this because I saw the girl in B&Q using it in front of me when she opened the tins and Ness was like that's so good you should get one of these and we literally walked past it it was two pounds it made it look super easy so I picked that up we'll start with this for a bit that one the tape properly <laughs> Oh my god, the amount of dust coming off this. Oh my god. Look at that. Ooh. Is it on that as well? That one. That one, yeah. Okay, so I did this in my last video and I got some questions why I did it. It's because it removes excess dust from coving, the architrave, skirting. Then this one's great for the wall. I don't know if you can see how dirty and dusty they are. And it just means that you're not rolling the paint on top and just like spreading that dust and dirt everywhere. But I think we're just gonna start painting so we can get on the roll with it. So <laughs> this has got very much upper arm strength. Oh, look at that. Is that easy? One take. Yes, yeah, so nice. easy. Nice, so that's a good tool then. <laughs> I hope this turns out nice. I really hope it does. Oh, that is lovely. You know, turn to a green that I'm just not a fan of. I want it to be quite dark. To be fair, I think even if this was on the walls, I think I would like it. And if it's gonna get a tiny bit darker, I think that looks like such a nice colour. Before I start, one thing that I got asked a question a lot last time as well was how on earth do you freehand now? I've been painting for a long time, well not a long time, like I'm not professional, but like I've done it quite a lot. I have done it freehand because I cannot be bothered to tape even though taping does give you really crisp edges. So I basically take just as long to freehand as I do if I were to tape up because I do have to go slowly. But top tips, 
have an angled paintbrush. I didn't have one when I did the living room because I just didn't have one, but I now have one. So much easier. Gives you a really clean line. You need to feed the peak paintbrush, so don't just dip it in really lightly. You need enough paint kind of inside the bristles. So you, like, you lap it up like this. And then you don't want an excess, but you don't want it super, super dry. So you need enough so that it can spread, spread, spread all the way across. You don't want to have to keep like going and stopping and topping up because that's when you get janky lines because you can't match it up perfectly. Whereas you have like one longer line, it looks much better. But it takes a little bit of practice. I would say start on corners of walls first to practice. You know what I mean? Like from the top to bottom, even though you're painting both walls the same color, you can practice there, get a hand for it, and then you can try it on the tops near the skirting. Right, I normally have that up against there, so it's got somewhere to push against. And then open this up so we've got a little bit more range. And then try not to dip this end. It goes in over time, but try and keep it all the paint as much as you can just on the roller. And the first couple of swipes, especially with a new roller, will be a bit patchy and they won't be as good. But as the paint gets right into the fibres and the bristles, it will start to stock the paint a little bit better. Oh and then all you've got to do is have a decent amount on but you need to go slowly if you were to run up the wall really quick it will flick everywhere okay so you literally just put it down just take your time with it and keep going over the same spot a little bit to make sure you're getting a good coverage up and down up and down and there'll be so many little air bubbles like i'll have to do two coats of this because it's matte as well it's quite hard to get good coverage but as long as you're not leaving like you see all these little bubbles here yeah you're not leaving those everywhere like try your hardest to like look just go up and down the same spot a little bit it's like this yeah perfect you see how it's not on the edges yet oh yeah you see the edges are still quite dry that's it get it dipped in the paint there we go get her in that's nice Okay. If you look underneath, you can see it's still dripping a bit. That's it. So I normally turn it on its side so that the paint goes, yeah, on itself. There's a little bit more. There we go. Now lift it up to the wall. Oh my God. That's it. That's it. <coughs> oh. Slowly. No, that's fine. Slowly, slowly. It's just because there was a Yours bit too was such much. such a straight line. No, that's absolutely fine. But yeah, you want to do up and down lines. You don't do crosses or anything. And yeah. then try to get like, to that height is good, but try and get, you see these little patches still going yeah. there, but really try not to touch the clothing because that's the ball like, that's it, stop, that was quite close. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to repaint the clothing. Okay, so I need more paint now. Yeah, so more paint and go to the left because I'm going to start on the right. Do you? I have literally no idea. Not one single bit. Right, okay, obviously it's not finished because we had to try and do as much as possible in about three hours. I think it's blue. You think it's blue? Just because you took the stuff off the surface, innit? Whoa! That's not the colour I was expecting, it's better. Oh, do you think? Yeah. I would, I would describe it as moss green. Oh, really? Is that right? I mean, it's not like... It's not the name of the thing, but it's, it's good. It's quite that army green. Army green. It feels more army green. Yeah. Moss is a bit more earthy. Looks really good. 
Do you like it? Yeah. Look at the desk against it. Yeah, yeah that's really nice. Isn't that perfect? The door not so much. The door not so much. The door's going to get stained. No, that's really imagine good. like the frames up against the... Uh, in fact, mm. will you please go and put that just very close to the wall so I can see what it looks like. Wow. It's nice. Thank you. Nice. Definitely out of my comfort zone. Yeah, but you've got to do that sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like with the living room, I thought it was dark, but now that I'm used to it, I don't think it's dark anymore. That's dark. No, the living room. Like, when I did the oh, living yeah, room, no. I thought, this is dark, oh my God, and I didn't know if I liked it, but now I feel like it's not dark because I'm used to it, and actually I think I could go darker. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, though. This isn't dark, but that is quite this dark. This is quite dark. So that's why that's I like, more of a concentration vibe. Yeah, the office. exactly. See, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm talking about. So I was looking at all the different greens and I thought I want it as dark as possible so that it can be like moody in the evenings. Like you. <laughs> to be fair, that is one coat from Valspar. For oh, that dark of a colour, it's really good. I will be doing two coats, but that is good. So that's the Valspar Classic walls and ceiling. Um, yeah, walls and ceiling in the matte shade. Which I can't believe you haven't finished this. I mean, we started about three hours late, so we only had. Two and a half, three hours to get it done. I'm gonna finish it off tomorrow. Nice. Very nice. Hello. Guess who got super ill yesterday? So yesterday I intended on finishing the dining room painting, um, doing a second coat on the walls, and potentially starting to paint the architraves and the skirting. The day that we were painting, so what you've just watched, in the evening, I said to Ness. I feel like I'm, I'm getting ill. My throat started to catch. I was getting really phlegmy. I was having to like, you know, when you have to like, uh, like when you've got to kind of like, like snort whatever's in your throat back. Sorry, that's so gross, but I could feel it. And I was like, oh no, I'm getting ill. I managed to survive that night, but I had the worst sleep ever. And yesterday when I woke up, my head was absolutely pounding. My throat was gone. I kept coughing up loads of Flare. I had hot and cold flushes. I felt like I was going to faint when I stood up and um, all in all just wasn't a great day for me So I didn't manage to get around to painting anything and to be honest today I still don't feel great. So I'm having a day on the sofa just editing the color now that it's all settled I am absolutely beyond obsessed with it. I love the tones so much Even watching back now I'm editing this video like watching it back seeing the colors like drying and then when Rob put the picture up against the wall I was like like so excited to see what this room will become. Today's Friday, I'm basically gonna try and recover a little bit more today and then tomorrow I'm definitely gonna get back to painting it because I want it done sooner rather than later. But this is good because I guess you guys can kind of let me know in the comments anything that you think we could do with that room. I'm definitely gonna paint the skirting and the architraves but I think that's a good room to test it on because eventually that room will get ripped out and turn into the kitchen anyway. So if if it's awful and we hate it, then it's not a problem. But it's a good tester room to do so. I've obviously got all of my gorgeous frames and prints. I've got my desk to go in there. Let me know what you think about the arrangement of the sofa. And I think we're gonna have to get rid of the Billy bookcase because it's just not good storage. So maybe I could build like some built-in storage or something like that. But yeah, any ideas that you've got, let me know. So gutted that I ended up getting ill. Like I really wanted to try and get that room finished and painted within a couple of days and get it set up so that I can actually start using it as an office. But I'll just have to wait a little while longer. Let me know what you thought of the video. I know there was a lot of talking in this one, kind of when I'm chatting to Ness and chatting to Rob. What do you think of that if I leave that in? I just thought I'd trial it out because to me, it helps to paint more of the story. I feel like it's quite nice. I feel like it, it feels like you're in the room with me. Like when I was watching it back, I was like, it feels like you're on FaceTime sort of thing. So let me know, let me know what you think of that. Anyway, if it's really boring, then I won't do that in the future. Obviously I don't want to bore you guys, but if you liked it, then I can definitely leave more stuff like that in, in the future as well. Okay, I'm gonna go and get back on the sofa, finish this video. I've got Married at First Sight Australia to watch. Oh, so good. I cannot believe the drama that show entails. It's crazy. Back to painting tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one guys. Take care, love you lots, bye.